calculate how many ways can you get three heads and two tails. We're going to get heads, 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 tails, tails. You get heads, tails, tails, heads, heads. There are many, many different combinations or orders or sequences. So for that reason, we have to learn something about what's called combinations before we learn about chapter. But with the formula that I was referring to before about the points, it's called the binomial distribution formula. Before we learn about the binomial distribution formula, we have to learn about combinations. And before we learn about combinations, we have to learn about something called factorial. So let's, we're going to start off with chapter four material about factorial. So, for example, read factorial, which means exclamation point, but in this particular context, it's read factorial, is three times two times one, or six. Because three times two is six, six times one is six. Four factorial would be four times three times two times one. We use a dot to represent multiplication in mathematics, and that's going to count. Four times three is 12, 12 times two is 24, 24 times one is 24. Going in the other direction, two factorial is two times one or two, and one factorial is simply one by itself. And the only one which is a little bit against the pattern is, anybody remember this from some other class? How much is zero factorial? Remember? One. You have to memorize that it's equal to one. This is really, now you may think, well, it turns out it's not really an exception, because everything ends with a one. So this also ends with a one. And if you go back to the, math, the deeper mathematics of it, it really makes sense. And we'll see another example where zero factorial makes a lot of sense that it should be equal to one. But at this point, I imagine just have to memorize that. Like, oh, one over two. So, Having said that, the problem we're going to work out in preparation for chapter four, chapter five, is if you have three people on a committee, and I call them John, Jim, and Jane, but call them person A, B, and C, and you'd like to create a subcommittee of two people, like there are three people discussing a bunch of issues, and say, you know, you two guys talk about it, and then come back, and well, what do you decide is good enough for everybody? So how many subcommittees can you, can you create from three people choosing two at a time? Now, of course, you can come pick person A and B, you can pick person A and C, and you can pick person B and C. What about person B and A? Well, in some applications, you do care. One person might be the president, John might be the president of the committee, and Jill might be the vice president of the committee. Here, Jill is the president, and John is the vice president. So that might be two separate, but if on the other hand, there's no president and vice president, everybody's equal, then A, B, and B, A is the same thing. So we're going to assume in our calculations right now what's called combinations, is the order is irrelevant, A, B, B, A. So if the order is irrelevant, if the order is irrelevant, then we only have three of them. Somebody might ask, well, what about why not having A and A? The same person can be chosen twice. Well, some situations that can happen. For example, you're rolling a die, you get a three. You roll it a second time, you get another three. You get a three and a three. Well, in this example, we if, if we're making the assumption that once somebody's chosen, they're not put back into the pot to choose them a second time. They only get chosen once. So the second thing is called choosing without replacement. Words, once you're chosen, you can't be chosen twice. Not in other words, you can't have AA or B, B, or C, C. So under those two limitations, the question is how many ways can you choose three people from three people to create a committee of size two? The answer is simply three. Now the mathematical notation for this is three choose two. So you can read this as three choose two. You can, those you might have seen it this way, three choose two. I'm sure a lot of you, how many people saw combinations with this symbol? Nobody, three people raising their hand. How many people saw combinations with this symbol? Two people. All right, so this is a more modern symbol, I believe. So, um, so now what is three choose? Now, you can read it the, the shorthand way of saying three choose two. The long way to say it, how many combinations of three objects can you make choosing two at a time? That's the long way to say it. But we're going to say three choose two, and we know the answer is three. How do we know it's three? Because one, two, three. We can physically see that. But but when it comes down to a logic thing, like, like 25 choose 6, you can't do it in your head, so we have to do it by a formula. And the formula involves these factorials, and it's, this combination formula is a three-part formula. The formula says you take the top number, which is the sample size you're starting with on top, and factorial it. 
and divided by the top minus the bottom, and then factorial that difference. And finally, also put on the bottom the, the size of the subset. So it's a three-part formula which you can put n and k if you like, or the book has it that way, or top and bottom. The top factorial, the bottom factorial, top minus the bottom factorial. Let's work out the actual numbers. Three factorial is three times two times one. Three minus two is just one. One factorial is just a one. And two factorial is, again, two times one. These cancel, and you're left with three divided by one, or three, which, of course, matches up with the answer that we saw right over here, that there were three of them. Yes? Where did you get that two? It's in the parentheses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, the problem, I think maybe you walked in the middle. The problem was, if you have three people on a committee, and you want to choose two people to be a subcommittee, person A and B, person A and C, person B and C, so the two is not the size of the subcommittee that you're trying to choose from. So for example, let's take one other example. Let's say you have um, great basketball follow-up, but you have nine players on the bench, and you can pick any five of them to be on the team. Assuming everybody plays every position, which of course is not realistic, but if everybody plays every position, how many different teams can you field from nine possible players? So it's going to be nine, choose five. You have nine people, and you want to pick any five, the first five, the last five, the couple in a million, you know, any, any five, and according to the formula, it'll be nine factorial, nine minus five factorial, and then 5 factorial, which is 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial is also 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So you don't have to multiply everything out, which can get pretty uh, tedious. You just can't. These five cancel this because you're multiplying. When you're multiplying, a lot of cancel top and bottom. If it's plus, you can't do that. And the 4 goes into the 8 2 times. The 2 goes into the 2, cancels out. The 3 goes into the 6 two times. So we're left with this 9 times 7 times 2. 9 times 7 is 63. 63 times 2 is 126. I believe the answer is 126. And I'd be embarrassed if I'm wrong since, since it's on videotape. But the answer, I think, is 126. If anybody noticed any careless mistakes, please let me know. So 9 doesn't cancel. The 7 doesn't cancel. And the 2 doesn't cancel.